politics at work inside Uzbekistan. We've seen the daughter of the president, at one point rumored to be the successor, pushed out of or falling from grace, and now we're put under house arrest, I should say, still under house arrest, um, which, which actually revealed for the first time that there are political rivalries uh, at work in Uzbekistan's elite, which means, I think, again, that international actors have a really important role to play. They have leverage. Uzbek officials, including Karim himself, crave legitimacy, they crave contact with the West. Uh, not only Gumar and Karim will crave that sort of attention um, going to fashion shows in New York. So that's what we need. We need um, actual conditions, I think, placed on, on Uzbek government officials so that those officials in the security services who were responsible for your imprisonment who are responsible for extending the sentences of political prisoners, which I, I, I failed to mention there, as Catherine said, between 10 and 12,000 political prisoners in Uzbekistan. They need to know, we hear loud and clear, that they could be subject to certain restrictions, including youth bans. I think that's going to have an effect of incentivizing the reformers in the system to uh, speak up a little bit more, and they see that there are consequences for those officials that are using the right. There's more frequent public statements on the US MBC website. On the, we see the US mission to the OSCE making important statements on human rights, which should be done at a higher level. Every high level visitor that's coming to Tashkent from the US government should call out the government on the specific political prisoners they're, they're, they're holding, the torture that's occurring. We've seen that in a number of cases. We saw a former Secretary of State Clinton, when I was based in Tashkent, visited the country following the OSCE summit in 2010. A day before seeing President Greenland, she said, I am looking forward to raising the case of imprisoned human rights defenders with him. Lo and behold, the next day, I got to meet a, a, a dissident that was released from prison. So we see that more public pronouncements of the U.S.'s expectations could, could lead to some, some actual improvement. That gives, that gives a lot of opportunities to tie human rights concerns to the question of uh, military assistance, restrictions on, on, on military assistance. And, and also, uh, even some Central Asia experts are guilty of this. We've, we've often heard that the largest threats to Central Asia could emanate from Afghanistan, now from ISIS, first from the Taliban, not from ISIS. But really, that obscures the, I think, the reality, which is that it's the severe human rights abuses, the thousands of political prisoners, the endemic torture, the systemic issues which could result in a catastrophic collapse of an authoritarian system that actually present the greatest risk to security in Uzbekistan and in Central Asia. And until those are addressed, we really do have a ticking time bomb in Central Asia. Thank you. We'll open it up now, sir. They're, they're investing in uh, irrigation projects. Um, the Asian Development Bank has, has projects in Uzbekistan. We've been urging uh, the boards of those uh, international financial institutions to use their, their voice and veto when it's appropriate, where there are human rights concerns. The, the IFIs have a, lot, have, have, have a large role to play. Um, China, as you said, is moving in on Central Asia, which, again, uh, really underlines the need for those actors that who's, who's the real selling point is their values, the European Union and the United States, to, to stay true to those goals. Because China and Russia will continue to uh, you know, not attach any human rights conditions to their investment. That's not going to change. They're not leaving the region. The US can only compete with them by, I think, living up to its own true identity of promoting democracy and human rights. And that means calling out abuses when and that means speaking to the people of Uzbekistan rather than to the president of Uzbekistan. Um, I should add also that the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which in my personal opinion was set up pretty much as a counterpoint to OSCE, you know, OSCE minus concern for human rights, is an important center of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which is based in Tashkent, the internal affairs. And I've been told that. Uh, Foreign ministers and ministers of the interior get together, I think, every six months or so and compare notes on laws, methods of not promotion of human rights, shall we say.